Harley swings at the fences for a second helping. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles Batman Arkham Knight Harley Quinn. Yes, we've already had a look at Harley Quinn in a previous video, but she is still one of my favorite Harley Quinns in my collection and was worth a second look. She comes from Series 4, she was figure 14, and the only other figure from Series 4 that we've also had a look at on this channel was the Joker. First thing we'll do is figure out how tall Harley Quinn stands, so I'll put the tape measure right to the very top of her head, and we'll stop it right there. There we go. Inch-wise, she would be 6.5 inches tall, which in centimeters, let me just switch that over for you right now, centimeters you're looking at 16.7 centimeters in height. She doesn't come with much in the way of her accessories. She comes with, for example, her bats, her trusty swinging bat, which has been given a nice aged look to it. It looks like it's been cast in likely uh, beige colored plastic, and then they simply have dry brushed, uh, almost uh, like a brown or darker gray over top of it. You can see that they've added some nice rivets there, about three quarters, about three quarters of the way down the handle or the main part of the bat, the bat. And it's also got the rivets on the top there as well. It's a nice looking bat because it's got, like I said, a look of age to it. It doesn't look very bright. It doesn't stand out. It does look really more like a realistic bat. Then she comes with a series of hands. Let's talk a little bit about those hands. Now, unfortunately, as the bat rolls right away on me, don't go too far, bat. Unfortunately, one of the problems that this figure is plagued with is poor hands. And I'll get that right out of the way because it's something that we need to discuss as well. I happened to uh, to find this figure actually at my local comic book store recently because I couldn't find where I put my other one. And they had about 10 of these that they were marking down and clearing for about $4. I kid you not. I got it home realizing very quickly how much I adored this Harley Quinn. And even though I really did already have this one in my collection somewhere, $4 was hard to pass, and pass I did not. Then I realized quickly, oh right, yeah. Now, I don't know if this is the reasoning why the figure hasn't sold very well, or they just so happen to have a whole lot of them. But her biggest problem is her hands, and we'll talk a little bit about that for a second. Right now, I've just got her with a pair of relaxed hands, or relaxed palms. You can see that the fingers are extended out, five, four fingers, don't want that correction to be made, and a thumb giving us five digits on each hand. When you are taking the hands out though, you gotta be really careful. And why do I say that? It's because this peg right here is notorious for popping out of the hand. I've had this happen on a couple of hands. And let me just show you those right now, I'll put her down. She does have some slight difficulty standing as well, but no, not as big of an issue as these hands. Now these hands, let me just show you how it works the peg right here, this pegs into her forearm. Everybody probably gad understands that right off the bat. When you pull her hand too violently, too quickly, what ends up happening is there's a peg that runs right through and connects, see that hole on the one side? The peg goes through that, and in theory, this sits right on top like that. I hope you've done a fantastic job of simulating that, even though, as you can see, it's nowhere close to being right. Uh, the problem is though, when you pull it, this part of the hand stretches and this comes right out, leaving this behind. Now this is a fixable solution. You could, you could do one of two things. You could take a knife and you could cut out this area right here, which I might ultimately do, and you can then glue this in place. I don't necessarily need this to swivel back and forth. Or you could take the longer route, the longer road to the same goal, you could heat this, submerge this in water, and try to soften this, pry this down, and then sit this on top and clamp the hand back together. Let it cool and hope that it stays where it wants to stay and it doesn't pop out again for you. But again, it's such a big problem. And I realized quickly, yeah, that was the same problem I had the first go around when I had this figure. Luckily, I've also got some extras because I already have the figure somewhere in storage. But yeah, it's something that 
is worth mentioning because you're probably going to do this the first time that you take the hands out. Oh, right. Yeah, I did that as well. So she does come with a pair of relaxed hands. Uh, she does also come with, and it just happened, it unfortunately had to happen to the hand that was gripping. She does have a pair of gripping hands, which you can see also has done the exact same thing to the red hand. Uh, again, these will sit into pegs. It just unfortunately was the case where the peg popped out. She has a pair of gripping hands and then a little bit more boring. She does have a, a pair of fists and this was the black hand that had that problem. So unfortunately, one gripping hand in red, one closed fist in black were both unfortunately the, uh, the victims of very loose pegs popping right out. We move those to the side and we have a look, despite that, a very flawed design for a lot of the problem with these female figures. I still love this figure. It was worth, like I said, going back and having a look at her again, even though despite I already had a look at her and despite already having her in my collection. Four bucks, can't beat that. So what, what do you get for $4? Not much, but what would you have gotten for about $25 when this was originally released to stores? One of, if my honest opinion could be made, one of the best modern looking Harley Quinns. Now there's not many modern Harley Quinns. And what do I mean by that? I mean more realistically looking Harleys versus comic Harleys where maybe like the eyes or the face obviously doesn't look as naturally realistic. Here you have a much re more realistic figure. You almost It almost looks like you would have taken a regular figure and dolled her up in the Harley Quinn colors. What you also ultimately get too is it kind of gets, it looks like someone is cosplaying as Harley Quinn. And I'm not a big fan of cosplaying by any stretch of the imagination. But again, I think this figure is one of the best examples of that. The face sculpt is quite pretty. She has slightly pink tones added to the sides of her face, breaking what is otherwise a rather pale white pigmentation to her face. The sculpting of the pom-poms, and really as a whole, she really is reminiscent of like the classic Harley Quinn colors and costume. But what almost looks slightly different and gives it also the more sense of a realistic looking Harley is the fact that the, the coloring, or I should say more so the sheen added to the uh, figure's body here, simulates almost something more like a pleather. Or like a, like a rubber suit, I guess would probably be the best way to describe it. It looks very much like she's wearing a rubber suit. You can see like all these neat little stretched areas in which this would have been fit over top of her limbs. Even like her hat, for example, you can see where naturally it would have stretched as she fitted over top of her of her head. All these little stretch marks running along the top here, which also has these nice naturally developing little seam lines around the side where she probably would have made this costume for herself. You can almost even see how that seam line runs up down the runs up and of course down the middle there and how the two fabrics look like they've also been like sewn together, causing a little bit of that, those stress lines. I mean, if I could be overly critical, which I would hope that I could be overly critical over the span of a review, I could say that the paint gets slightly missed on the side of her mask. It's not certainly a deal breaker because the trade-off is still a really neat looking Harley Quinn. Of course, she's got the collared areas there, pom-poms present on both sides, and she's also got the frilled collared sleeves, also something that you would see with Harley Quinn. Uh, I like also that the diamonds also on the side of her arm and on her <clears throat> is raised. It's not simply just painted on. They've sculpted it so it raises and sticks off the surface. Same also, the same for the black here on the side. Yeah, I got a little bit of a smudge right there. As we move further down, more red diamonds are present. And she gets down to one of the other big problems with this figure. She has high heels. And high heels normally would not be a problem, but unfortunately Harley Quinn does already have a tough time standing. I think a lot of it is because the way that her, dare I say, lower half feels compelled to push her legs forward. And when you have her legs completely flat back, I feel like she sits on an awkward angle kind of like she's not quite leveled. 
It still becomes a problem though when you are trying to stand the figure because again, there's not a whole lot supporting on her heels. In fact, I feel like more of the weight is sitting on this heel. This foot is a little on the crooked side. And again, I could heat that a little bit if I wanted to, just to kind of get that to, to not, of course, give me the problems that it's currently giving me. Those are really the only two problems with this figure. Heels, uh, support, a standing position. Again, as quickly as I get her to stand, there she goes. She falls right over. Timed perfectly to the way I just said that. And then, of course, the biggest also problem, one of the more, from a design standpoint, because I guess heels, you could work around it. But again, it's a big big problem that pegs are popping out of these hands way too frequently and at the times that you certainly don't want things like hands to give you problems hands are the things that are of course going to be supporting say like her baseball bat and if I have to worry every single time I take a hand out that I'm gonna be caused this sort of anguish then I'm worried of and take, taking the hands out that I want to be very very careful and I can't stress this enough be very, very careful when you're taking those hands out that you don't have that problem. So heels and that contribute to a figure, unfortunately, that does have plagues of problems with her. But still, aesthetically, design-wise, she is absolutely fantastic. If anything, I guess one fix could have been that they put peg holes in the undersides of her feet. That could have certainly solved the problem of her standing properly. But solving the problem with her hands, I think, goes much further than that. I guess there is very little of a workaround to it. That's just the way that they design their hands. It's unfortunate though that the hands, the pegs at the very least, come out so easily, causing much more time than to be expelled trying to fix the hand as an act instead of just being careful right off the beginning. Okay, so let's have a look at our posability. Harley Quinn's head rotates all the way around. It's kind of misleading because you look at the silver portion which is actually sort of a choker and you think that she has a swivel right there that's actually part of her neck that part doesn't move instead she's got a ball joint in their head like here which can angle back and forth and up and down no the pigtails the pigtails the sides of her jester hat cannot be moved they're just sculpted in place the arms hinge out and you can also rotate the arms all the way around she has a bend at the elbow, which also allows the forearms to rotate all the way around. And she does also have a hand swivel. Be very careful that you don't do any further damage to those pegs. Legs split out, legs go forward, legs go back, legs bend at two points in the knee, one there, one there. And then she does also have the same hinge on her feet that she does have on her hands. Thank goodness you don't have to change anything on her feet because then you'd also have problems with her feet also breaking off those pegs, basically in the same place. I also have a bit of a struggle when it comes to moving her knee. It's really locked up here, causing me probably to consider heating the leg and seeing if I could bend it properly in, a place, in the place where it's supposed to be. Harley Quinn is currently standing we're sort of on borrowed time as to when she decides she wants to fall back over. Again, I have to stress this. I love this figure. It's one of my favorite Harley Quinns in my collection. So much so that $4 was enticing enough that I would consider buying a second one. Even though I already technically had this one somewhere in my collection, I now have two. That trade-off actually works out now to my favor because now I can find where that other Harley Quinn is and I might just ultimately use those hands instead of trying to mend the ones that currently came with her. Hands are such a big problem when it comes to some of these earlier figures. It's just, it's unfortunate that it, it, it inflicts only seem, seeming to be female figures, but I guess it's because the nature of the hands, they're so much smaller and the pegs are more likely to pop out. If you can overlook those little small nitpicks, again, a fantastic looking figure. Can you get her for $4 though? I can't make those guarantees though. Unfortunately, because the figure also inherited only a single hinge in her elbow, if you ever want to display her in a pose in which the bat is naturally resting against her shoulder, good luck. One hinge in the elbow is not nearly enough to get clearance to have the bat resting naturally against her shoulder, so when it comes to final looks, this is as best as I can get it. I know over the course of this review, it sounded like I did a lot of nitpicking, and it's not really necessarily my intent. I know when I review a lot of these figures, my goal is to point out some of the flaws that could plague a figure. Unfortunately, Harley Quinn here, she does have a couple of them. One of them is the heels and her feet. 
that can't really be helped. But they could have put a peg hole on the undersides of her feet that if you wanted to at least attach them to a display stand, it would have helped aid the figure to stand properly and not worry all the time that she was going to fall over. That I can overlook. The big problem, though, is the hands. We have already looked at the hands and talked extensively about her hands, but we'll talk a little bit more about it right now. The more I examine the hands that she comes included with, if you look at the hand like a clamp, the clamp sits against a little peg or a little rod that goes inside of her forearm. That's basically how the hand comes together. But what connects the hand to the rod is a very thin white peg, sort of a slot that goes in between. The problem is that plastic that they use, that white plastic, I would imagine it's probably used for the entire hand. It unfortunately is the problem that if you're adding stress to it, if you're pulling against it, that little white piece of plastic that connects the hand to the rod is what gets very soft very quickly. And when you pull it, it unfortunately lets go of the rod, the little connector point that goes into the hand. The more I look at it, it's very, it's too soft of a material. If they had only made the hands a more denser plastic, it would have rectified all the problems that I was facing and discussing over this review. So again, I, I sound like I'm a little bit, like I'm nitpicking this figure, but quite the contrary. Like I said, it's one of my favorite Harley Quinns in my collection, so much so I bought her a second time. I probably will not go back and fix the hands that have problems with this figure. I probably will just try to find the Harley Quinn that I have and just either Frankenstein, take the hands that I need from that figure, or just if I find that figure, I'll just display that one. Or if I can't find it, I'll just keep her in the pose with the bat sitting on this side of her shoulder rather than on the other side that we started the review at. Either way, um, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news. I would say normally that you should be able to find her at your local comic book stores, but she's an older release. You might luck out like I did, where if you can find a local comic book store that just so happened to have a whole surplus of her, you probably could get her at a good price, like I got this one for $4. Or if you are looking to get this one and can't find a local comic book store in your area, you could always source her out online. The fact that she's not that old of a figure or the fact that a lot of people probably picked her up when they did, you could probably find her on eBay for about the same going rate of what she was going for when she initially was on store shelves. So if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, what I still think to be one of the best modern looking Harley Quinn figures, this is the one that you want to grab. This was the DC Collectibles Batman Arkham Knight, and this was figure number 14, Harley Quinn. A really good figure, despite some problems with the way that she was put together. If you guys want to go back and specifically just look at Harley Quinn stuff, if Harley Quinn is your thing and you're thinking, I wonder if this guy's reviewed more Harley Quinn stuff, <laughs> you fools. I've got a whole ton of Harley Quinn stuff that I reviewed on this channel, and they're all under the Harley Quinn playlist. Best place you can find all the Harley Quinn stuff is checking out there. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos also will be coming soon to this channel. Harley Quinn probably a good bet yeah there's gonna be harley quinn stuff coming to this channel but other stuff as well and as always guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time